Oh, great. All right. Well, welcome everyone this afternoon. I just wanted to kick it off. I am Rachel Vanderveen. I am the assistant director of the housing department with the city of San Jose. And we are very excited because for a long time, we have been working on this um, concept and program of developing a notice of funding of availability for an acquisition rehabilitation program. So um, again, we we thought a lot about it. We put together the program guidelines, the underwriting guidelines, um, all of this. And this is really our first time uh, bringing forward something like this in um, quite a number of years. So we're just really excited about a chance to introduce a program that will address displacement within San Jose in a very direct and intentional way. And so we're thrilled to be, be here today and to be able to share this information with you. Um, so the format of our program is that we will um, provide a presentation and then we will have a chance for questions and answers um, after the presentation. So with that, I can turn it over to the team. Good afternoon, everyone. Tasha, you you're on mute. I see you're trying to um trying to speak. Go, ahead, go right Kemet. ahead, Tasha. No, go ahead, Kemet. Thank you. We might have some connection issues. Uh, right now, I just wanted to let you know that this is uh being recorded, and it will be uploaded um to this uh link here um once it's done next and i think rachel did you want to give some information on the background of this and sure so um again the city has been holding a discussion um ever since we introduced our um, anti-displacement plan um, a couple of years ago to talk about the need to preserve existing affordable housing throughout San Jose, because we know that um, many of our residents are facing displacement pressures just by pricing of the, of the housing in our city. And so what we wanted to do was to create a tool to help um, preserve some of the housing that exists. And so what happened is our city council um, set aside $5 million as a part of the budget process last year for this purpose. And our team has been working on pulling together again, like I said, defining this program, and defining the um, what the underwriting guidelines would look like for it and pulling this all together to make it available now. So um, so yeah, that's the background of our um, of what got us here today. Okay, thank you. So moving forward, we're going to go through the overview of the timeline, uh, eligible projects and the applicants, and then more details. Um, regarding documentation requirements, our scoring, the performer we have, and some other information regarding our guidelines, uh, how to apply, and then we will have a question and answer uh, extraordinaire after we present it. Next. So during this meeting, you can submit questions anonymously to the host using the Q&A function that's available here on Zoom. We should be able to respond to questions um, at the end of the presentation. And then after this conference, uh, after what we said earlier, um, if you have any further questions about the NOFA, you can e email them to Mark Gerhardt and um, please reference NOFA CSJ Housing 10-23-23 in the subject line of the email. We won't be responding to those uh, questions submitted in any other manner or format. 
So please make sure that you email those questions directly. And then the recording will be available online. And Kemet, I think this was yours. All right, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Tasha. Um, this is part of our 3P, uh, 3P's housing strategy. Uh, we tackle the problem production, preservation, and protection. Uh, it's part of our citywide anti-displacement strategy that we've been working on. And we're using funds from our Measure E um, and low and bond income funds. Next slide. Uh, the NOFA was released on October 23rd. Uh, you're welcome to this. Uh, th I mean, you're welcome. To, thank you for attending this pre-submission conference today. Uh, we'll take questions that you can submit to us today and up until uh, November 13th. We'll post all answers to questions uh, through the Dingo process, which will be discussed, discussed later. Um, and uh, applications uh, need to be submitted by December 13th. Uh, we plan to publish our awards by January 16th. And um, uh, we have an appeal period after that. And then uh, everyone will be notified of the final awards by February 12th. So uh, it's a pretty aggressive uh, schedule over the holiday period, but we uh, expect to get it done. Next slide. Applicants, it's uh, any housing organization, a nonprofit, for profit, and a joint venture, joint ventures. Uh, the projects we're looking to fund are unsubsidized uh, multifamily rental projects between four and forty units. Um, that's unsubsidized with any previous city money, and uh, we're pretty hard and fast on the unit counts. Not three, not forty-one, but four and 40. Next. Uh, you'll see that some documents must be provided uh, within a specific format and uh, specified in the application form. Uh, there is other required information, but if it doesn't require a specific format, you can uh, provide it in a reasonable format and we'll let you know if what you submit is a problem. Next slide. Uh, please, oh, there were, please, thank you. Um, please fill out the, the application and accompanying uh, checklist of documents. Uh, and also applications must uh, submit using the pro forma template that we are providing. Next slide. In this NOFA, um, there's a total of 100 points. The staff will evaluate each application for completeness and threshold, re threshold requirements must be met. Panel will conduct a full evaluation and the panel reserves the right to seek more information if necessary. Next slide. Uh, readiness is 40% of the scoring and uh, it's made up of several components or the funding commitments Tenant and neighborhood engagement plan, rehabilitation plan, relocation plan, cost effectiveness. Next slide. Uh, displacement prevention is worth 10% of the scoring. And that's this displacement prevention plan. Next. Uh, the other 30%. Uh, 30% will be target population and project attributes, including uh, income targeting, right sizing of rents and property services. Next slide. And the final 20% will be developer experience and commitment to community development. Um, next slide. I'll take it from okay, here. I think I'll turn. Okay, I'll turn over to you, Tasha. Thank you. Thanks. So um, we do have a few other notes. Uh, please know that um, all the applicants 
um, can be subject to public records requests. Additionally, uh, we want you to understand that we have two documents that were attached to this NOFA, uh, one which is Exhibit C. Those are our current multifamily underwriting guidelines. Um, we are asking that applicants read through the this manual first. They are the city's primary set of guidelines. We've created a secondary set um, in Exhibit B as supplemental guidelines. Um, these amend and add additional requirements to the manual that meet the goals of this NOFA only. Next, please. So here we pointed out a little difference so you can gain a better understanding that these supplemental guidelines that are provided for you are derived from the multifamily guidelines. Um, it consists of both correlating numbered sections and new unnumbered sections. Uh, and the numbered sections refer to the specific section in the multifamily guidelines and unnumbered sections may be new to this NOFA only. So in the, to the right, you can see a little picture. For example, 14.3 uh, says qualification for property managers. That is going to be the same number in our multifamily guidelines as it is in our supplemental. However, if it's unnumbered, those are new and directly correlate only with this NOFA. And next. And we will have Ying here present how to uh, register on the Dingo and get you going there. Ying? Thanks, Tasha. So hi, everyone. I'll be doing an intro to the Dingo, which is the portal where the NOFA is posted and where we will be providing updates, announcements, and amendments. So this is where you will get the most up-to-date and accurate information on the NOFA. Um, this is also where you will be submitting your applications. We recommend that new users register for a free account as soon as possible because the approval process may take a few days. Um, so I'll be going over two things today, how to register for an account and then how to upload files to submit an application. Um, if you have any technical issues with the site itself, the best resource will be the Dingo's customer support team, and I have that contact under the third bullet. So to register, you'll need to go to bedingo.com slash San Jose. The slash San Jose is pretty important. If you just go to the bedingo.com site, you'll be brought to the main Bedingo homepage and eventually end up at a paywall. So make sure you start on the city's Bedingo site, which is pictured here on this slide. And here you can view the NOFA without an account as well. So you need to scroll down until you see the search bar where you'll see 2023 Acquisition and Rehabilitation NOFA is highlighted in blue. So search that and it will appear in the list underneath. Um, and just as a note here that the search function is a bit finicky. So if you misspell any part of the NOFA title or search, switch around the placement of words, um, you might not have the, the NOFA itself show up in that list. So to go back to the registration process, um, you'll start by clicking on the vendor registration button, which is circled in red. And then you'll be taken to the vendor registration page, which is a short three-step process. The first is to select categories that are relevant to your organization. So in this case, you might choose something like grant opportunities housing or something similar. Um, and this will inform the types of solicitations you'll be notified for in the future. And these can all be updated after you've made your account, but you'll need to select at least one here to move on. So after you've done that, click continue application. And this is the second step, which is pretty straightforward. You'll create your user ID, which will be your email, and then you'll create a password and click next. Um, but also a note here that if your org isn't registered in Bedingo with the city of San Jose already, or if you aren't a paying subscriber for Bedingo, you won't be able to link multiple emails under one org. So it will be a one email login per org. If you want to know how to link multiple email accounts for one organization, you can reach out to the Dingo um, after you've made an account. So on the third step, the Dingo will ask you for more information about your organization, um, like the name, address, and your contact information. So go ahead and fill in all of those required fields and then click save and go to verification. 
and you'll be brought to this final page where you'll have a chance to review and modify the information submitted so far. If everything looks good to go, go ahead and click Submit Registration Form. And that's it for the registration. Um, this is the confirmation page. You'll also receive an email confirmation from info at .com. So please keep an eye out for that in the inbox, in your inbox. Um, and now that we have an account, I'll go over how to submit an application. So we'll start by going back to the city's Bedingo site, um, the bedingo.com slash San Jose. And the sign in is at the top right corner. If you encounter any technical difficulties, the Dingo's contact information is posted in the middle of the front page, circled in red. Um, and after signing in, scroll down from this page back to this section here where you search for the NOFA like I mentioned before. It will show up under the heading bid listing and any of these circled links in red will take you to the NOFA page. So you can click any of them and you'll be brought to the page where the NOFA is posted, which looks like the image here. Um, I recommend bookmarking this link so that you can access it quickly. The top section is an overview with some of the main dates posted underneath it. If we make any changes to the deadline, they will be automatically updated here. Um, and if you scroll down, you will see some other important information like today's pre-bid conference and underneath that an intent to respond section circled in red. So if you are interested in applying for this NOFA, we recommend that you submit an intent to respond, but this isn't necessarily required for this NOFA. Great, and if you scroll down the NOFA page here, you'll find the online submission section um, that's circled in red. If you open that up, you'll see the click here button. So go ahead and click that to start an online submission. And you'll be brought to your application page. A pop-up window will appear first, so go ahead and read through it, and then click Cancel if you aren't ready to submit an application just yet. Like this. Um, here is where you will find all the materials we posted for this NOFA. I'm using a past NOFA as an example. You'll notice if we made any amendments or announcements, those changes are tracked. Um, I circled two examples in green circles on the slide. The old versions will still appear, but will be crossed out in red. And the new versions uploaded will show which announcement it was tied to after the file name itself. So please make sure you're always looking at the new documents when you're looking through this application. To upload your documents, you can click on either of the buttons circled in red. Um, edit my response or to the left, edit my response up in the left or the upload attachments button down below. And you'll be brought to this pop-up window um, and you'll click choose file to find the document on your computer. You can also add a description and then click upload document. If you need to delete any documents, you can do that in this pop-up window as well. The attachments will appear under list of reattachments, and then you can click the X on the right column to delete it. And when you go back to the application page, um, after exiting out of that pop-up window, you'll see the documents you uploaded where the green circle is. And when you're ready to submit after uploading all your documents, you can go ahead and click either of these buttons on the bottom, review response before submission, or view checklist items. They'll take you to the same pop-up window. And then this window will come back. It's the one we saw when we first arrived at the application page. So go ahead and read through it again, follow the instructions, and then hit submit. Um, Bedingo should allow you to continue to make changes to your application even after you've submitted up through the application deadline. And then you'll receive a confirmation pop-up window. Um, an email will be sent to your inbox and that'll just confirm that your application has been submitted and will be notified on our end as well. So if you have any questions, I have a list of resources here on the right. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Um, and I think with that, I'll hand it back to Tasha for the Q&A. Thank you. 
so now we have an opportunity for our guests to ask questions and hopefully we can provide some answers. It looks like we do have one question here. Uh, when would the fund be released? I think well, I think the great that. news is that the money is on the, it's out there, it's been released. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what this notice of funding availability is all about. The $5 million um, is available. So um, if if that's what you're asking, then the answer is um, it's out. Um, if you're wondering like what day it could be wired somewhere, that's a little bit different because um, we will be um, going through this whole process to determine the awards and then um, that will act, that will follow. So. Anyway, so I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Let's see if we have any more. Okay. Here we go. Was there a specific reason that properties over 40 units were not included for eligibility? I can try and address that one. So um, so what we were what we really wanted to do with this NOFA was to specifically um help create a small sites type of program that um we really have not been able to do in the past and so the idea is that these funds will be able to help prevent displacement for some buildings that are smaller in size next question is how much will be determined as an award per application Um, I could, I'm trying yeah, to think, ahead. I think we had, did we, we put in, okay. So let me just think about how to answer this a couple of different ways. First of all, we have $5 million. So that's, um, that's, that's what we have to work with. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's something, but it's not endless. Okay. So, uh, we're going to need to look at all the applications that we receive. We also put in some concepts about like a per unit amount. Um, and so we were looking at um, amounts that are around, um, I'm just trying to, I don't know that I have it totally memorized, but I think around like 300,000 per unit, 325, something like that. So if you would take that number times the number of units, um, that you might consider, then you could size an approximate award. So that would be a way to get, get, um, an idea. Right. Um, let's see, uh, are funds exclusive to priority areas or are continuous areas also considered? We will be considering, um, funding um, in other areas, uh, continuous areas will also be considered. Um, again, we don't know how many applications we'll receive. So those in area areas of high displacement will be um, prioritized. Next is to confirm, are you looking for properties that have not received prior city dollars, correct? Mm -hmm. I don't know that we actually thought about that. Um, we would like to be able to um, place new affordability restrictions on on properties that are not restricted today. However, I wouldn't say that um, that would preclude someone from trying. So I would agree. It, it could be used in, in various ways if you have a property that possibly has market units or doesn't. It's it's really what the developer is looking for and meeting those threshold uh, requirements. Let's get the last one here or the next one. Would current tenants be on Section 8 count as subsidized housing? going to say yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to think, but you know, again, in that case, um, what we're, we're also going to be considering 
the building itself, right? So we're going to be thinking about the building and what we're really, the goal of the program is to provide long-term affordability for the building. So a tenant with a portable voucher may move in and may move out of the building, right? Um, and so this program would actually put a, a restriction on the building itself um, versus having, you know, the person <laughs> receive a subsidy and could actually move on. And so, but um, if someone is receiving a Section 8 voucher, then they would be, um, they are, their housing is being subsidized in a different, in, in one way. So hopefully that answers your question. We have another question or, and slash comment. Thank you for this workshop. Could you please clarify the maximum number of acquisition, acquisition, <laughs> well, they're tongue tied here and rehabilitation projects that a single application can encompass. Acquisition. Um, I'm just trying to think, I think that the way we've contemplated this, uh, if you have multiple properties, you should submit multiple applications. So each application will be tied to a specific address. And then, um, but you know, if, um, if one entity had a desire to submit, um, multiple applications for multiple properties, that would be fine. I would just recommend splitting them up. I think it may be very confusing. It, it really actually wouldn't lend itself very well. The application, um, to more than one address. Rachel, if I could add to that, um, typically there would be one application for the apartments that are being financed in one structure. So for instance, if you bought two tiny properties next door to each other, that could be thought of together, you know, but it, the question sure. is what's the financing structure? If you would get a, a senior loan, um, to finance three or four scattered sites in a you know fairly small area, not necessarily contiguous. Um, that would be you know you could apply for that scattered site project if you will. But otherwise, if each property is going to have its own financing structure, then what Rachel said is true. You would you would um, apply per financing structure if that makes sense. Yeah, thank you for the clarification. Uh, yes. we, we have another question. Are existing LIHTC finance properties eligible? Thanks. Oh, right. So once again, the goal of this program is to okay. create a new affordable housing. Um, we did not make this an eligibility criteria, but what we're looking for is ways to um, create affordability where it doesn't exist right now. But that doesn't make someone um, a lie tech deal ineligible. It is just, it's not, it may not, it, it's not necessarily what we're looking for. So we're still here. If anyone else has any further questions, can I add on to one of the answers? I think early on, someone asked the question, when would the funds be available? So the process would be that the application would be filed, it would be evaluated. If it was selected as a winning application, then staff would bring that commitment to the city council. Um, and after the council were to commit to the project, we would then have to enter into loan documents together. After the closing of that loan, then the funds would be available. So um, Rachel or Tasha or Kevin, I don't know if you have any timing that you had thought you might get to counsel with to it tell people plan. It depends on the project. Um, it could be a few months. I would say anywhere from two to three months, depending if the project is ready to move forward. Uh, it's it's all uh, relative to the project. All right. Well, let's see. It looks like we do have two more questions. Um, 
says, sorry, I just connected briefly. So I don't know if this got an answer, but to clarify, would the Section 8 VA housing voucher tenants count against an application as the city is looking for unsubsidized properties? So would this, would it count against? Yeah, so I can jump in and try and answer that again. So again, what we're looking for is a prop, the property being restricted for affordable housing. So, um, so if it is a case where a tenant has a portable housing voucher and they can actually move in and out of the property, they can kind of move wherever they would like, um, that tenant is subsidized, but the property is not. And so what we're looking for in this program is to find a way to create long-term affordability for the building. So um, I would say that a tenant with a voucher um, does not mean that the property is subsidized. It means the tenant is subsidized. I hope that helps. And we have another question. Are the funds available during construction or is it a perm loan? The funds can be available um, for construction. This, if I can expand on that a little bit, of course, we're talking rehabilitation because we're talking uh, existing properties. But yeah, the eligible uses include acquisition costs, they include rehabilitation costs, and then permanent financing. So we would seek to close, I think, documents that may address all phases, or we may end up with two phases. Depends how the lawyers want to document it, but all those costs are eligible. Thank you, Kristen. So it looks like we don't have any further questions. All right. So moving forward, after this pre bid conference, uh, questions about the NOFA as we mentioned earlier, should be emailed to Mark Gerhardt uh, by November 13th at uh, 5 p.m. Uh, applicants must reference NOFA CSJ Housing 1023, uh, 2023 in the subject line of the email, and uh, the city will not respond to questions submitted in any other manner or format. Questions today? that were asked will appear in our in the city summary and the recording will be available online as soon as possible and just right below here we relisted the name of the nofa when we go on to dingo and then once again our reference next and i believe that's it Thank you all for joining us and we're excited about this process and look forward to seeing applications.